Coming up on Theater Talk. I think theater is still the best way about talking about public issues like public and emotional issues. People get it mm -hmm. when it's live and then we're all in the same room together. We hear each other in a way we don't reading an editorial or going to a speech. Theater Talk is made possible in part by the CUNY TV Foundation. He was barely 18 when he left Texas. That's too young to come to a city like New York. As a young gay man, he didn't feel comfortable where he was. Andre wasn't gay when he came to New York. <laughs> From New York City, this is Theater Talk. I'm Susan Haskins. And I'm Michael Riedel of the New York Post. Michael, Mothers and Sons is Terrence McNally's new very powerful play with an amazing performance by Tyne Daly. Yeah, just about to open at the Golden Theater, and we are delighted that the play brings tonight with us on Theater Talk, Tyne Daly, an actress I have admired for many, many years, and I believe this is the first time you've been able to join us on Theater Talk, so welcome. Indeed, but I know your reputation precedes you. Oh, thank you. <laughs> you're, you're too kind, darling. I mean that in all sincerity. <laughs> and Terrence McNally, who has been, has been on the show a number of times, and I remember, Terrence, uh, the last time I think you were here talking about that wonderful musical you wrote, Full Monty, which I always liked. And uh, you told us at the time you'd put a note on your desk that said, no more musicals. And I've noticed you've kind of kept to plays in the last uh, 10 years or yes, so. I have, I have. I and have. Why, why is that? I'm curious about that. Um, uh, simply because musicals take so much time these days. Yeah. You used to be able to write one and get it up, and now it's five years later to get a reading or a workshop. And at 75, I'm parceling my <laughs> remaining hours out very uh, carefully, so. Yeah, if you're the playwright, you're on your own time and table pretty I've learned that you also choose the right partners to write with, and playwriting, I'm on my own, but when I do a musical, and I have worked with some pretty terrific people, and there's probably one more musical with Aaron's and Flaherty, who you didn't I, write adore, I adore, and uh, who didn't write Full Monty, yeah. but I adore working with them, so. Now, did you, after you did your terrific performance time in Gypsy, which I remember uh, from like 1990, 91, would that It's been? very difficult. It was the last century. <laughs> long, long time. Here she is, boys. Here she is, world. Here's Rose. The best acted Mama Rose. I saw, I didn't see Ethel Merman, but I thought you. I did. I did. <laughs> <laughs> How did she compare to uh, to Mama to to Ethel Merman? Because I always said Ethel couldn't really act that well. That's not true. I think she acted it with her voice. You put on that album. That's great acting and yeah. great singing. They were just very different. Time brought different quality. I was moved by time. I was in tears at the end of Act One when time. When I didn't know time then, mm. but when she sang "Everything's Coming Up Roses," I couldn't get out of my seat. I was crying so much. Time gave a vulnerability to it that Ethel Merman didn't. She, I mean, Ethel Merman was stupendous. She was a mother with two yeah. kids she had to feed. Yeah, yeah. Ethel Merman was a great star with two great, credibly her grandchildren. <laughs> yes, <laughs> <she did. laughs> Make stars of, not her actual children. <laughs> but I was actually at the opening in the very last row of the Broadway theater. Wow. And during the overture, someone was like standing there, sort of annoying the hell out of me. <laughs> and I had to say, Oh my God! And I said to the person I was with, Michael Kahn, Yo, yes. down in yeah, yeah. one Shakespeare in D.C. Mike, he said, shh, 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 the overture's on, and suddenly, sing out, Louise, yeah. <laughs> and it was her. And now every performance of Gypsy you go to, they're all, the where's she going to come from? Right. Where's she going to oh, oh. But that was the time the audience was truly surprised when Merman yeah. sailed down that aisle, and I saw her first. Oh, that's fabulous. <laughs> you saw Ethel, right? So just I did. Your, I was 11. Impression of that. Uh, I was 11 years old, and um, um, I had been approached to play the young Gypsy through my dad's agent, because my dad was an actor. Right, really. And I d didn't know how to tap dance or sing. I was not, you know, I, w I was already imagining myself an actress. But <clears throat> my father and mother lectured me that I couldn't go to the audition unless I'd say yes, because the actor does not have the luxury of a no. Oh. The olden days. Mm -hmm, yeah. So we went to see it, <clears throat> uh, like we saw a lot of shows. And I thought, well, um, uh, you know, the kid's gone at the end of the first act. I want to be that one. <laughs> I want to be that that woman there. She's, mm -hmm. a, she's you know, I was fabulized. Uh, and it only took 40 years or so to get to try that. <laughs> <laughs> but, but, you know, the play was made on her yes. by Arthur and Julie and, and, and uh, uh, yeah. Stephen. And um, now I have a play, neat segue, that's been made on <laughs> me. <laughs> uh, and that you have to wait a long time. 
Did you actor for a long time, and this man has made a play for me. Did you write Mothers and Sons with her? Absolutely, because I, in the middle of the night, had this inspiration when they're going to revive Masterclass. Who in the world could possibly play a part that Zoe Caldwell, for whom I'd written that right. role, and I settled in the midnight because of Gypsy, said there's only one person, huh? Tyne Daly. Huh. We worked happily together, and I said, I want to write a play for Tyne. And yeah. So it's all interconnected theater. It yeah. really is. And there's a, there's a marvelous build from being a, a, you know, an apprentice to a journeyman to, to, to uh, maybe a master. Mm -hmm. um, I, I couldn't believe when he called me up and said, do master class, because I had been weeping in my seat right, right. over Zoe. Mm -hmm. uh, during master class it was it's still one of my five top times in the theater mm -hmm. um, and and they're I'm pretty strict <laughs> um, uh, so this one and I had a really good time I think we re-realized master class like Arthur and I re-realized Gypsy mm -hmm. in a way to for to serve in its own time mm -hmm. you know the theater we you have to serve now right it, it's different than the movie. So you would not have. So written, this, you know, it was, uh, you would not have written Mothers and Sons had you not done the revival of Masterclass no. with her. So she really was the driving inspiration. Yeah, uh, you know, you find the expression of someone who hears you, mm -hmm. and if they don't hear you, uh, you never hear your play. And uh, I, I, I think that's so important that the right people are in the room to pre present a play for the very first time. Now, when we do Masterclass, everyone knows what it's about, and the actress playing the part is being judged. I'm not the way I was 20 years ago when Zoe premiered that play. The way I'm being judged now by Tyne's performance, and I have the perfect interpreter. And I think a lot of plays that probably are much better than any of us thought they were have vanished because they weren't performed right the first night. Well, that's interesting. With Mothers and Sons, you brought back themes that you've written about before, mm -hmm. but you're speaking about the situation and you're dealing with the AIDS crisis mm -hmm. and uh, um, the homosexual rights. That you're updating it for now, and please tell us a little bit about what happens in this play. Well, this play, I think, is an is uh, inspection of the enormous change mm. our country has gone through. Uh, when I first came to New York, Gay men weren't getting married. They weren't raising family. They weren't joining the army. We were criminals. <laughs> we weren't joining the army. But the world has changed so much. I wanted to write a play that reflected that. And the AIDS is still a wound in our society that that is not completely healed. And I think we have a long way to go still. And this play is about that. It's also about forgiveness. It's about compassion. And it's about family. The definition of family has changed so much. Two men, two women can have a family. That was not even a possibility to me as a young man. I always thought I was a very progressive. I was always out. I always thought I was a very political gay man. And it never occurred to me that marriage is a profound right. And to look at someone eye to eye and say those words for sickness, in sickness and in health, for better or for worse, is so profound. Uh, it still takes my breath away, and I've been married for close to 12 years, mm -hmm. and it's the best thing I ever did. And um, this play's very personal to me, and I, I, I care very much about what it says. And I wanted to write it for a great actress who is in opposition to almost everything I stand for. <laughs> a time is the name. Not the actress. The party the character. Yeah. <laughs> the party, yes, that party poop. Tell right. us why. Why? Why? Why is your character? I mean, she's lost her. She lost her son to AIDS 20 years ago. And this, I'm not. If I'm not mistaken, uh, um, the wonderful movie that I saw was based on a small play on right. Andre's mother. Andre's mother, which took place 25. Which years Which took ago. place 25 years ago. You are sort of Andre's mother coming back to get in touch with Andre's partner who did not die of AIDS. Well, after it's a crisis. There's, there's a whole bunch of steps that happened in 20 years where laws go down and um, opinions go down and people change. Mm -hmm. So what the play is trying to talk about is what happened since then. Not then, not the crisis, but uh, how, how we have changed. And, and you can't change um, unless you're willing to. Mm -hmm. um, and the acknowledgement of marriage, uh, 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 when people stand up in front of their friends and say, I promise to do this, and the friends all promise to remind them that they promised to do this <laughs> on that day. Mm -hmm. You know, it's a difficult thing, but it makes you, it validates you, it gives you a stamp of approval in some way that's really different than, than um, 
doing something on the side. Mm -hmm. I, I married uh, uh, my husband in 66. He is a black man uh, still. <laughs> he has a different melanin count than I, but our marriage was against the law mm -hmm. in 17 states in the United States of America. Mm -hmm. We saw those laws go down. It changes. Um, and uh, to be part of telling the story of the change is, is really And she's resisted the change. That's she, her tragedy. She's resisted that she, the change. She's unable to change. And people get left behind. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's a very sad place to be. And when this play takes place, there's only one other person in the world who even remembers her son, Andre. His name was Andre. Yeah. And that's Cal. Cal Hedwig. And uh, Frederick Weller. Is, is she uh, also Frederick, Frederick Weller? Frederick Weller, Cal, yeah. who, who's his, 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 survived his him. Yes, but are you also, is she also unable to change some ways because she could never really accept the death of her son, so young and so and, and, and so healthy, and only realize his sexuality when he, as so many people back then did, say, I, by the way, Mom and Dad, I'm gay and I'm also dying. Mm -hmm. <laughs> she, she didn't understand unconditional love. Mm -hmm. And if we don't give unconditional love, I don't think we're really loving someone. And uh, a mother who cannot give unconditional, or a father, I think has damaged their child in such a profound way I think we're still dealing with and uh, you know that's why I find the play optimistic the the boy that they, they're raising mm -hmm. the six-year-old he's going to grow up in a world where he never heard words like queer right. faggot Nancy that's going to make the world better and a lot of people are growing up in the world today that think nothing of seeing an interracial couple heterosexual or homosexual and that was not true in my lifetime I grew up in Texas <laughs> I remember drinking fountains, white, colored, you yeah, know. Yeah, yeah. Thank God that's all gone. Yeah, yeah. I, don't, I don't know that it's all gone, because I think here in, you know, sophisticated where we are, uh, <laughs> but I think that to, to be reminded of, of, the, of the, the, the wrestling that we did mm -hmm. with our own souls, I think uh, uh, this man over here writes big themes. Mm -hmm. the, the thing of, to have a child predecease you yeah. is a thing that I, it gives me the horrors in terms of magic. It's so out of order. It is so out of order. Um, so that certainly is operating, her loss. Mm -hmm. But comparative loss, her loss, and, and, and Cal's loss, the man who loved him, you know, it's, it's, it's intricate. In terms of her loss, she seems to have felt she lost him on one level when he left her in Texas mm -hmm. to go be an actor. And you have this line very beginning that there's referring to his his lover refers to him being gay, and the mother says, well, he wasn't gay when he was a child <laughs> in Texas. Like, I mean, it's probably the biggest laugh in this. <laughs> 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 but, but, it's two New York artsy people who did it <laughs> too. He did it. lost him to his real life mm -hmm. previous to his death. And many gay people have heard their parents say to them, you can't understand, you people, what your father and I or your mother and I have. Mm -hmm. That's how invalidated gay men and women have been made to feel in my lifetime, and I'm seeing that change. Thank God I've lived to see this. I've lived in the most incredible period. I know. <laughs> it wished to be a gay man, from the furtive darting down dark stairs to gay bars mm -hmm. in the 60s when I was at Columbia to today, and it's, it's beautiful to be able to write about this, even with the challenge, and it's we not a happy ending. But you can't say to anybody else, you don't get it about love. Yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. You don't get it about love. You How? can't come to this hospital. You're not <laughs> related to the Yeah, you're yeah, not well, related. You live through, you live through you all, yeah, you live through all that, too, when, <sighs> when, when lovers were not allowed into the, with a family came from Texas or Louis or wherever, yeah. and they didn't want the lover in the hospital room. And you're out of the co-op because the deed is in his name, and he died, so you're... You're out of this building. My husband and I are, <laughs> happen to be friends of Edie Windsor. And, and, and tell our viewers quickly have, who don't and know have, We've Windsor. known her for 15 years, and she got this bill when her wife died for over half a million dollars of estate tax or inheritance tax, and she said no. Yeah. She's the Rosa Parks of the... And she sued, yeah. And one, and Doma has Supreme been Court. defeated. I mean, she's a na national heroine. It's just what Rosa... Some One day, Rosa Parks, someone said, no, I'm not getting out of this seat. I'm, sitting here, and Edie Park said, no, I'm not gonna write a check to the government for $560,000. <laughs> we need wife. people like this, not playwrights. We, <laughs> we need activists <laughs> like that. Being married to, a, to a, 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 a black man, what? how did the family handle that? What was your uh, reception from, from people? My family was embracing, and so was his. So that so was that, an advantage. That I worked in the theater where people at least pretend to be liberal, and that was an advantage. <laughs> 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 no, but 
uh, and there was, and it was at a time of very <coughs> big change, mm -hmm. and we saw those changes. Do my children still get followed around in uh, um, uh, Bloomingdale's, <laughs> thinking that they might be stealing something? Sure, they do. Mm -hmm. Not everything is gone, right, right. but the laws change and the culture changes and the artistic expression changes. So we talk about this stuff out loud when it was once something secretive and not talked about. All of that experience contributes with all of, of uh, Terrence's experience to try and make this play. It, it, it sounds, I'm, I'm fearing now that we're sounding like, like it's too much about politics. What I love about the play it's about is that it's about four beings. human beings and none of them are a stance or an opinion. They're each, they're human mm -hmm. people. And the, the dads are gonna make mistakes with their kid. They're gonna come up against stuff from this kid that they're not Gay ready for. Gay parenting doesn't mean perfect <laughs> no, but he's right. No, yes. Parents, Gay marriage you know, doesn't mean perfect marriage. When, when, when Cal says to, to me, you know, about their kid and, 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 and Catherine says, well, children aren't the answer. And he says, this child is. She wants to give him the horse laugh. <laughs> Honey, you have no idea. I went with a friend of mine who was a psychologist and we were talking about the ending of the play um, on the way home. And she said, well, the thing is, the child is the most mature and giving, <laughs> and that's the wonderful thing in this play that you, that you set that you see the future there in this amazing child. Um, and that we, they uh, got that. that <laughs> it, getting it, it, you know, that, yeah. pounding them. Very good. Right. Right. <laughs> but one of the things that I find interesting that the, the play brings up, and, and of course you both lived through this time in New York City, um, is the impact of AIDS. That I think there's a whole generation now of people in the theater. Uh, who have no sense of what the theater world was like mm -hmm. in the early 80s when people started dying. As you said poignantly, the only person who remembers Andre is his lover Cal. And, and his mom. You can't, uh, number the number of uh, their friends who would be gone, who, who mm -hmm. would have died. I mean, what... She can't talk to Andre, about Andre, to anyone after this afternoon. To me, the saddest line in the play is that it's when he says we're the only two people in the world these pictures mean anything to. They're going through that album. And, you know, it wasn't just theater people. Yeah, no. Young gay men and women come up to me and say, gee, we never knew how bad it was that period. And we even forget our, our history so. I, well, that's even what, our I, colleague, but, even even uh, uh, Bobby Steggert, when we were yeah, rehearsing, who plays, who plays Bobby, uh, Cal's um, husband, when we were in rehearsal and talking about those days, Bobby was gobsmacked. There was stuff yeah. he had no idea. Was going on. How old is Bobby Sager? I'm not going to tell. Well, but he's in his 20s. Yeah, he's in his 30s. Very early 30s. All right. And, uh, but but just s stuff that's not recounted. Yeah. So we tell each other stories over and over again until we get it. <laughs> you know, we repeat right. stories but so that we can understand. And may I say, you also sometimes theory. worry that the that younger people don't are forgetting that this is still a very dangerous disease. Mm -hmm. not, not to there, get There's on a reminder it, yeah. in the play of yeah. it. And, uh, that, well, I'm, yeah. Without belaboring, but he does say this isn't over. And, uh, but, uh, you know, I was, I was talking to someone about the play the other night, and I realized as a, I thought I got a very good education at a Texas public high school. I had a wonderful teacher, but I never heard the word Holocaust as a child. Mm. You know? Um, so, I mean, it, that, it's out of I that. didn't know about it. I came here. What is a Holocaust? Well, that, that was mean? a very strange... Uh, um, they didn't teach... Anything and, and about that, World War II was, was us that? against the Japanese. I never heard anything about what was going on in Europe. But uh, this is very interesting because I, m m my aunt was a high school teacher in the early 50s, and none of her students in the early 50s knew anything about the Holocaust. And you wonder, what was up with that? For some reason, they wanted to bury it for a while after the I, war. People have to be reminded. Uh, I wrote a play several years ago, Some Men. There was a scene yeah. where mm -hmm. two young gay, gay queer theorists were in her interviewing two old, elder gays yes. yeah. in the park and they didn't know about any of this <laughs> and so many young people came up or talkbacks after the play saying we didn't know any of this which of course shocks you when you've lived through it and how could they not know so I, th I think theater is still the best way about talking about public issues like the public and emotional issues people get it mm -hmm. when it's live and then we're all in the same room together we hear each other in a way we don't reading an editorial or going to a speech. And you've couched it in this very dramatic yet funny play, which I have to also add takes place in this fabulous apartment, which is the set of the, yeah. of the Golden Theater. And so it's not a lecture, yeah, it's your, art. Your it's characters art. have gotten richer you're, 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 over you're, the years, yeah. <laughs> And time has, on, and time, wonderful costumes, wonderful hair, a fur coat. The hardest part is playing a Republican. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> Tyne, like all great actors, knows that there is a bond that links us to even dreadful people, and she can find that humanity within them. doesn't mean you approve of them, but it helps us understand how they got that way in the first place. <laughs> Tyne was a, t a television star creating that wonderful role in Cagney and Lacey, and you have this way of taking a very problematic person and making her just so lovable and engaging that people are, are, are drawn to you. I like human beings. Yes. I really like human beings, and I have met a lot of people who aren't human beings. They act like they're not human beings a lot, but you know, but but finding that finding that stuff, and and it needs to be revealed by by a, a compassionate and 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 loving man, someone well, who's. That's my. I do that's, think you've changed. The words are my contribution, but you have stage presence, and there are three times in that play, when time is alone on stage, for up to a minute. Mm -hmm. And you can hear a pin drop. She's opening her purse. She's looking at a photograph. She's looking out the window. That very few are given that. You look at pictures and we're riveted. Stage presence. Yeah. And Zoe Caldwell has it. Yeah. Zoe has it. And those are the kind of actors. Angela so Lansbury. There are Angela very Lansbury. <laughs> she was okay yes. too, wasn't she? Those are the actors a smart playwright writes plays for. What's your t shirt say that you. Oh, your mama's. mother gave you. Uh, my oh, mom was a wonderful she, actress, and she was she gave up her career basically, and she d taught my dad every word he spoke on the stage, and mm -hmm. she was interested in me and my brother Tim. Anyway, she came to see me to play one time at the Mark Tape Reform a long time ago, and I said, "What do you think, Ma?" And she said, "I have nothing to tell you. I have nothing to tell you. You know what you're doing. You've been doing this for 15 years. All I have to say to you is deeper, richer, fuller, better." <laughs> <laughs> And I, That's her mantra. Made me laugh so, so much. We had a T-shirt made in, in, in uh, Washington. Washington. Uh, deeper, richer, fuller, better. Deeper, yeah. But it, people say, I want to stop it a little bit because people say larger than life all the time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The thing about the theater is I'm in the same room as the people I'm telling the story to. Mm -hmm. It's not a shadow on the wall. Mm -hmm. It's not in a little box somewhere. Can't be, you know, flipped through the dull bits. Mm -hmm. You have to sit with me. And I with you mm -hmm. for 90 minutes, and I get to tell you the story, and then you respond to me. I can hear you breathing. You can hear me breathing. Right. I can hear laughing or quiet. That thing is not larger than life. It actually is life. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, yeah. It's, re it's real time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And there's a difference between that experience right. than any other uh, performing artist. And a pro, and a pro experience. such as yourself, you can feel that audience moving with you, moving with the play, when you're doing something new, a new play or a new musical. Oh, you missed something. Just a or moment. You? Hold on a second. Yeah. Is, your phone is ringing. I hope <laughs> Raven. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that. that's a very human touch. It's completely, totally. Leave it in. There you are. <laughs> no, but everything. We're not leaving it in. World. We have to stop. <laughs> Did you cut that live bit out? Fanny Eisenberg told me this when he was doing Sideshow. was when cell phones first came into the theater. And they were about this big, you know, the size yeah. of a box. And the cell, this thing rang, and nobody knew what it was until this woman pulled it out. Take it away like, from you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's right. Throw it away. <laughs> this, this thing rang, and this woman fished it out. And, it was, and no one knew what it was. And they heard, I'm at a play. <laughs> eh. <laughs> <laughs> Oh. Oh. What well, do you do when the cell phone <laughs> rings and okay, stand you're by. <laughs> Michael, you're okay, fine. Stand by okay. In five, three, two, four, okay. three. We just have a few minutes left, but I want to ask you, since you you lived through that period of AIDS, when you look back on it now, uh, I'm pretty friendly with Larry Kramer, and he still looks back with profound anger mm -hmm. about all that went wrong. How do you see it now as somebody who went through it, who lost friends? who's still here. Do you have the kind of anger that Larry has? Is it a different feeling that you have about those times? I can be in touch with that anger, but I don't feel it right now. No, because I, I think we've moved ahead, and we have become a community, and I think we're richer for the, it's a terrible thing to say, but I think the gay community has melded, joined, I don't know, we're different, mm -hmm. and it's for the better. But of course, the anger, the, the, the outrages of being forgotten, of, of government not paying attention, is, is unspeakable. Mm -hmm. And what Larry is angry about is very valid. I'm temperamentally a different man than, uh, than Larry. I took care of someone who was dying of AIDS. And you know, when you're really at home taking care of someone, that is very important. Uh, 
that becomes more important in a funny way than you can't, I can't get to that rally tonight. Right, right. I'm, so, I'm not saying this well, I'm sorry, but um, it was a terrible time that I will never forget and I don't want people to forget. I haven't forgiven anyone, mm -hmm. but I've moved on and I think the world has moved on. And I think gay men and women have moved on. We're smarter. We know we have rights. We're not going to take that anymore. So right. that's right. some kind of progress and born it's, out of great tragedy. And it's uh, uh, explored in this fine new play by uh, Terrence McNally, Mothers and Sons at the Golden Theater, with a terrific performance by Tyne Daly. Thank you very much for being our guest tonight on Theater Talk. Thank you very much. Thank you. I'm the only one who thought Andre was a difficult child. He was smarter than anybody. He had secrets. I was afraid of him. He could be so remote. I didn't know where he'd go in his head. I just wanted him to take me with him, away from Dallas and a husband I didn't love and never tried to love. He was unlovable. Some people are, you know, I, I've turned into one of them. Our thanks to the Friends of Theatre Talk for their significant contribution to this production. Theatre Talk is made possible in part by the Frederick Lowe Foundation, the Corey and Bob Dinelli Charitable Fund, the Noel Coward Foundation, Carrie J. Freeze, the Dorothy Strelson Foundation, plus public funds from the New York City Department of Cultural Affairs, the New York State Council on the Arts, a state agency, and the Theater Development Fund's Technical Accessibility Program, which helps provide closed captioning. We welcome your questions or comments for Theater Talk. Thank you, and good night.